What's up guys, this is Heiss, and we're here in Marion, Ohio, at the Huber Machinery Museum, where they have artifacts from both the Marion Steam Shovel, later Marion Power Shovel Company, and also from the Huber Manufacturing Company. If you've been around on the channel for a while, you may know that my last name is Huber and my great-great-great-grandfather founded both those companies. Right over there is a new acquaintance of mine's new Huber 1920 steam engine. It sounds like we're about to run it, so let's go check it out. Before we actually go run the engine, I want to tell you guys about my first interaction with Doug, the owner of this steam engine, because it kind of left me speechless. So my dad and I pulled up and we were in town for the reunion and we got to the museum and I had no clue that there was going to be any engines fired up or anything. I knew it was just family reunion stuff. And I get out of the car and there's a Huber traction engine sitting right there and it's got smoke coming out the stack. It's like, okay, that's cool. So I walk up to take a look at it and I'm looking around it and it's got a big honking steam whistle from a locomotive on it. And it's like, oh, that's rad. That, I, but what is it? I couldn't tell what it was. It looked like a six chime, but it wasn't exactly like one I had seen. And oh, okay, I wasn't sure what it was. So a little bit later, out comes the owner, Doug, and he's checking on it as it's heating up for the day. And I get to chatting with him, and right away he goes, do you do stuff on YouTube? I go, well, yeah, that's, that's my job, basically. <laughs> and he pulls me around the side of the engine, and he points at the whistle, and he goes, I was inspired to build that after I watched your video about your whistle. I, I didn't know what to say. Um, the fact that I had had a real world impact on someone and they decided to go down a cool project rabbit hole uh, and make their own Huber 6 chime. He actually found plans for a Santa Fe 6 and, and built it better than I built mine. But anyways, <laughs> it was just super neat. So you could almost say that there's a Huber 6 on a Huber traction engine. Uh, and then, of course, he offered to let me run the engine as well, and that was just a treat. So let's go check it out. Alrighty, thank you, sir. There you go. <laughs> I ain't never run one of these. Well, not much different. All right. Match your reverse lever. Okay. Clutch. Okay. Okay. Match your drain. Cylinder, Cylinder cocks. Yep. Right. Okay. So we're in forward, our clutch we're is... In, we're in reverse. We're in reverse. Yes. Okay. It, it's a tricky one. Okay, interesting. Yep. All right, so we're in reverse. The clutch is totally out. Yes. Throttle's off, and our drains are open, yes? Yes. Okay. The drains are open just right there. Okay. This so. valve is the steam chest drain. Okay, so we have a separate drain for the steam chest as yep. well. Okay. So we want to go into forward. And do we go all the way to the corner here? And we have two options for <laughs> bar settings, and that's it. All right. That's fun. And then a little throttle before we get the clutch yeah, engaged. Bit. Okay. See if we're on dead center. I don't know if we are or not. Um, it's hard to see from right here. Nope. All right. little throttle going. I see that steam chest drain. It's looking like it's mostly steam now. And then you just pull the clutch back and we go. Shut her down a little bit. Alrighty. Okay. There we go. Well, how about that? That's a different feeling. <laughs> and then we got chain steering right here as well. We have chain steering. That's super cool. It smells just right. <laughs> it's 
take a look see here. Now it's burning down pretty good. We still got about 50, a little less than 50. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, the, she's still burning pretty good, pretty fur, pretty far up. But yeah, she's down at the back. Oh yeah, they definitely draft good. I see exactly what you're saying. Seeing that fire like that. So if you're unfamiliar, the traction engine basically predates the modern farm tractor. It was used to plow fields, used to be a stationary engine that could move itself, so you could move over to various appliances and hook up a belt and operate random things across a farm or an industry or something like that. And the Huber traction engines are one variety of that. And they're a very particular and strange variety at that. Most of the other types of traction engines are of quite a different design. They look a little bit more like a steam locomotive, but on these road wheels with the engine and everything. The Hubers are called a return flue boiler, where the firebox is basically one big flue and it runs all the way through the boiler. And then there's smoke box number one at the front, where then the flues are, so the gases go through and the heat goes through the main big flue, circles back around, goes back through the rest of the, the tubes, back to the back where you are as the driver, the operator. Then there's two more inspection hatches, the other end of the smoke box, basically, and the stack itself is on your end, and the engine's backwards, and there's a whole bunch of neat little nuances to it. Really cool design, and really kind of ingenious in some ways, but definitely atypical for something like a traction engine or a locomotive, because there's no stables, there's no firebox, there's no crown sheet. It's all circles, the whole thing. It's kind of a really neat design that way, and it actually won many awards back in the day for the efficiencies that it had. So it was super neat to get to fire one and see how it drafted and, and get to run it. It's like a wood-burning steam engine, just pile it up so you can't see the <laughs> can't see any more daylight in it. <laughs> right. Yeah, coal, you want a, a small, but if you make it too thick, you'll choke it. But I've, I've with wood... I've always heard, just keep packing it in there. <laughs> that might be all she wrote. I think so. And it even shuts. Yeah, off we go. Off we go. Let's open our draft a little bit. Where's that at? Down here. Oh, okay, we got a damper just like that. All right. Excellent. And this isn't gonna wanna turn at all until we get going, so. Oh. Yeah. It's nice that we have that. <laughs> oh yeah. That works real nice. Yeah. <laughs> Still in forwards. Yeah. We haven't sat for long enough to condensate, or do these condensate yeah, fast? I wouldn't have to open it up. Alright, well let's open it up. Oh yeah, we did it a little bit. How about that? And Blow the whistle. Blow the whistle? Okay. Alright, if I have to. Yeah, I know it's cool for us. That sounds awesome. That sounds like one I know real well. <laughs> Uh, I think we're on center. Are we? Shocker. Okay. 
Okay, uh, release the clutch. Release the clutch. Yep. Alrighty. There we go. All right. All steam. Does that speed about good? Yep. Now we're working the engine a little bit. This has got a variable uh, exhaust. Really? Yeah, he was, he was the only one who did that. A variable exhaust? There's a valve under the steam jet. Okay. If you open that up, it lightens the track. Really? But you close it. It's it, so How'd they do that? Well, they've got two tubes coming up from the exhaust. Okay. So they either have one closed. And it sharpens the exhaust and here's the motor. Gotcha. And it's really handy when you're on a sawmill or something like that. Right, right. Basically, if you're burning wood, this will suck the wood right out. I believe it. I've not met anything that doesn't like to burn wood violently. Yeah. They burn right through it. Still two thirds a glass of water too. That's awesome. I mean, I haven't hardly seen that move at all. And we're building pressure now too. The one we get. There it is. But even that smoothed it out a fair bit. Yeah. Just like a just like a, a locomotive. I mean, yeah. I can see how driving to the bar took you a couple hours. <laughs> couple mile an hour. There you go. I wasn't in any hurry. Oh yeah, just for the enjoyment of it. So Doug had some really awesome stories and that's what we were hinting at in that little clip there. He said that one of the first things he did after he got the engine running again was that he drove it to the nearest bar to have a beer and then had his one beer and then drove it back and it took him several hours to go something like five or six miles <laughs> both ways. <laughs> Which is just, that's what you gotta do. You got a road locomotive, you might as well do it, you know? But perhaps more amazing was Doug's story about how he came to owning the engine itself. And this is me going to be trying to remember a secondhand story after about a week here, so I'll do my best. But Doug found out that his granddad had actually owned that engine and bought it new from Huber back in the early 1920s. It's a 1920 16 horsepower model engine. He said he bought it in like 1923, I want to say. And he used it for about six years and then it got sold to someone else and it, it puttered around for a bit and it ended up with these folks uh, who were going to use it to run a sawmill. And they had it and then World War II broke out so they never really ran it. And then the sons got back from fighting in the war and came back to help run the sawmill with dad and everyone. And dad, why, why do we have a steam engine? Let's get a diesel. So the steam engine got tucked away in a barn and left alone. And then it got handed down through the generations and things. So much so that it was a, a friend of his who was the grandson of the original guy, I guess, running the sawmill, ended up owning it. And Doug kept bugging him. When are you going to sell me that? Sell me that Huber. Come on, come on. Like, you know, granddad owned it. Like, sell me that Huber. Finally bumped into him at the grocery store and said, let's be done with it. Why don't you just name your price and sell me that Huber? And he named some price and Doug ran out to the car and grabbed the money and said, okay, I'll come pick it up. And so Doug ended up with a really, really nice machine. A machine that had practically, despite being as old as it is, 
had really only served six years of service. He said when he took it apart and measured out the bore of the cylinder, it was only one thousandth of an inch off of brand new. One thousandth of an inch. That's nothing. You should have seen how bad 491 was before we chewed her cylinders up. And that was just on a limited amount of service. Ah, just insane. What a fun story about this engine. And so cool to see that Doug has it and he's been working on restoring it and running it. So the clutch is just for movement and the, the flywheel accessory is always running? Yeah. Okay. So if you were to hook up and run a mill or something, you'd... You just wouldn't use the clutch, you'd just run the engine. Okay. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Let's hear this thing under load. There's a lot of torque multiplication in this wheel. I was gonna say, because you, you go pretty far to get a pretty small movement. My favorite things in the whole world. <laughs> well, I say it's the most fun you can have to have your <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I bet we do. Oh yeah. She's drafting real nice now. That's a lot of heat right there. One of the most like pure mechanical things I've run. It, the, the gear sounds, the feel, the e everything to it. It's different than a locomotive. Yeah, that's really cool. It's got character. Explain this one. <laughs> well, how does she sound on 80? We like it. <laughs> Got a couple more we can stuff in the back here. <clears throat> Even it out. It's nice, like the, the draft isn't as so suddenly violent as a steam it, locomotive is, mm -hmm. so it's not a huge deal if you don't have the perfect bed all the way across. Right. It just kind of works. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> it's fun. On a scale of one to 10, how hard is it to run in reverse? Or do we just go around again? It's easier. Easier? Really? Alright. You can see where the hell you're going. Yeah, I guess that, yeah, that helps. <laughs> Alright, that's all the way reverse. Clutch is off. We got the cylinder cocks open. Come on, sweetheart, a little less. Obviously had way too much fun with this. Doug's kindness and generosity in letting me run the engine was incredible. 
the story with the six chime whistle and, and just the fun, having fun with a attraction engine was, was totally new to me. I've never run one before. Totally new experience. So similar yet so dissimilar to a, a steam locomotive and, and really fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. But last but not least, I, I said my goodbyes and thanked Doug, but then I got press ganged into service to help them belt up and get the traction engine uh, on the fan that we actually were going to run to put a load on it so that we could put on a spark show that evening. And I helped the guys get it belted up, which uh, turned out to be quite a frustrating experience that I didn't film because I was hands on the ground doing the thing. Uh, but the belt was pretty short and that was the only belt we had. And I guess with a longer belt, he can have more degrees of freedom and a little bit easier time. But uh, it took us a minute to get it put together, but the spark show was awesome. So again, thanks so much for watching. Let's check out the spark show and that'll be that. Well, Doug. Thank you again, sir. You're welcome. Much appreciated. It's a beautiful engine and, and very fun to run. Yeah, let's go belt it up. That was just a huge pain in the ass getting the band belt hooked up, but it's doing the thing. <laughs> <laughs>